40 is a big number. It's where Dame Lillard likes to pull up from. And now you can get 40% off at The Athletic by going to theathletic.com slash thinkingbasketball. They feature huge names like David Aldridge and John Hollinger and also have great in-depth bubble coverage for every team. You can download the app, customize who you want to follow, and you also help support this channel by heading over to theathletic.com slash thinkingbasketball for that 40% off. For a number of years, Damian Lillard has been an established All-NBA guard, universally seen as an elite player, but never discussed among the MVP contenders. But since the calendar flipped to 2020, Lillard's dialed up his game to another notch, and that has me wondering, is this merely a hot streak, or is Damian Lillard now, arguably, the best offensive player in the league? Lillard's attack is a balancing act of deep pull-up shooting, and the ability to penetrate. Mm. His acceleration gets him past defenders to the rim, and he knows how to use his body as a shield to protect his shot. He's jumping back into the shot blocker here to blunt his reach. With a half step, he dips his shoulder into the defender to claim space, and that's a really crafty release. Lillard's not a very vertical finisher, but he understands angles at the rim. He's trying to get wide here so he can release the ball out to the right away from the defender. And at 6'2", this combination of guile and speed make him a solid rim finisher. Obviously, his handle is tight enough for this to work, gorgeous setup for this through-the-legs crossover, and he's up to speed quickly and uses the body for a left-handed finish. Here's another one. He fakes the crossover and goes to an instantaneous in-and-out move, and then the body positioning earns free throws. Lillard's game is driven heavily by pick and roll, and specifically this moment when he turns the corner and meets a big man. He can keep a live dribble and attack like this, or he can turn the corner and pull up. Notice all the space. Lillard burns drop coverages, so later in the game, the big plays closer to the screen, closing that space, but that still leaves too much room for Dame, and he thrives in this little gap. A few possessions later, they run the same thing, and now the big is hugging up to a shot, so Lillard hits the Jets and shows that savvy finishing skill. Even with big men up at the level of the screen, Lillard's hairpin trigger fires this bomb with minimal airspace. If the screener's defender goes to the wrong side, Lillard often welcomes the invitation to launch one, and he's developed intergalactic range on these shots, pulling up from 30 feet nearly twice a game this year. By stretching defenses to the edge of the atmosphere with these bombs, he can punish bigs who try to meet him. This screen is set near the logo because Lillard is a threat out there. This is crazy to say out loud, but on shots between 30 and 34 feet, that's 10 feet behind the line, Lillard is shooting 40% this year. He shot these at 30% in the preceding three seasons, so this is a notable improvement, and while there may be some luck involved, he's clearly a viable threat from this range. Now, there is the question of whether these are good shots. For instance, is this early clock grenade from the logo optimal? Think about it. What about this one from the Gulf of Mexico? There's a larger conversation here about what makes a good shot, but at least Lillard's stretching defenses by planting seeds inside their heads. Opponents have to respond to this by meeting Portland's screens out near half court. Tyler Johnson's late here and in panic mode, allowing Lillard to get into the lane and create offense. We've even seen old school traps when he crosses half court, treatment reserved for MVP level weapons, which makes sense given his numbers since New Year's Day. In 33 games, Lillard's averaging 31 points per 75 possessions, on true shooting 9% better than league average, which isn't too far off from peak Steph Curry numbers. He can't compete with Curry's perpetual off-ball gravity, but Lillard's not completely idle without the basketball. The Blazers often bring him into action with handoffs, and he unleashes that quickness with really nice backdoor cuts, here setting up a shot for a teammate, and this playmaking component is really the key to Lillard becoming the game's best offensive weapon. That extra attention he receives when he's cooking, two Lakers hound him here, opens up all kinds of shots for teammates. And when Biggs venture out to meet that deep pull-up, his attacks can collapse the defense and lead to open triples. 
Since his shooting is so dangerous, those handoffs draw out bigs and tug on the D, and these are nice cross-court kickouts to open shooters. Dame has been carving up defenses this year, creating shots like the all-time offensive engines. An estimated 17 shots created per 100 possessions would rank him near the best ever in this stat, and the pressure he exerts on defense is showing up on film. When he gets a step into the paint, he's capable of making this little laydown pass. He completes these with quick releases in the paint like this. But he doesn't always find these interior passes. There are ways to connect there or even exploit the mismatch. And here he misses a lob opportunity, maybe to either player before throwing this too low, but he's actually quite good about hitting the lob in the dunker spot. I mean, they don't call that area on the baseline the dunker spot for nothing. Lillard doesn't manipulate defenses with his passing, but he'll find plenty of good ones throughout a game. I wouldn't call him an elite passer, but he readily punishes help. This is a last second situation and his threat to shoot draws a trap, but his acceleration still gets him into the paint and that's a beautiful corner ball with five seconds left. He doesn't always hit the corner pocket. I imagine they're hard to see at his height and it also helps to have a high release point to throw over the top that Dame lacks. You'll notice Lillard usually snaps off passes from shoulder height, which can be limiting when trying to find the right angle of delivery. This probably shows up most in his pocket passes, which can be a bit off the mark when trying to thread the needle to the roll man. Even with some passing warts, Lillard's still capable of dropping really nice dimes, and that playmaking and scoring combination make him look like an offensive superstar in major impact metrics, ranking in the top five before the shutdown, and he'd be first in my offensive BPM model since the new year. His defense is another story for another day. He's not a very good man defender, easily bullied by bigger players. He doesn't have great lateral quickness on the ball, so good penetrators can drive around him, and he's caught up on too many screens for my liking. He can be upright and takes himself out of this play against a poor shooter. His awareness in help situations can be sharp. He peels off nicely here to block a drive, but there are flat moments off ball as well, completely losing his man here on this corner to corner baseline cut. Portland will sometimes assign him to 3 and D wings instead of quick guards, partially to avoid mismatches that arise from switching. And like most small players, he can't offer much around the rim. So he does give some of that offensive value back on the defensive end. At times, this stretch from Lillard has been incredible. If his passing were elite, or if he were slightly bigger and better finishing at the hoop, I do think we'd be talking about the best offensive player in the world. Portland has scored a whopping 121 points per 100 possessions with him on the court since New Year's Day, and even with offensively slanted lineups, that's an impressive number. Lillard's bonkers range has unlocked something with these really high screens, where the very next play down the court, the big is just a step or two higher, and that destroys centers who play the popular drop coverage. I'm not convinced his three-point shooting can last. He's at 44% since January 1st, but even with slightly cooler three-point shooting, this version of Damian Lillard is one of the four or five best offensive players in the game today. Remember to check out theathletic.com slash thinkingbasketball for that 40% off. It's a great way to support this channel, as is going to patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball for additional content, historical stats, and more. Thanks to all the Patreon subscribers who make this possible. And as always, I hope wherever you are, you're having a great day.